Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. We are back. Paramount Studios in Hollywood. I got some soldiers with me. I got some generals with me. Heavy hitters in the building. Firstly, I must say my, my guy Diego Av, chilling. Yo, yo. Chilling. <laughs> yo, yo. Very <laughs> short and concise. <laughs> we got Todd Pritch over there. I thought that was the Cali Bear on your shirt for a second. But, um, mm -hmm. and then we got my man Half, chilling, ordering yeah, some food because this is real life. <laughs> so today we're gonna focus on an upbeat melodic hip-hop track and we're gonna show you all the pieces to the puzzle. So let's get started. It's BusyWorksBeats.com I brought my Razer Blade Pro with me. This thing is a beast of a laptop. I'm running that through my Universal Audio Arrow interface and we got that going into the board. Alright, so I'm gonna get started on the drums because half killed the drums last time. I'm gonna try and put my spin on drums this time. And we're gonna use the ultimate kit from the producerkit.com made by Diego himself. I keep shouting out Diego. This is Diego. There <laughs> so he is. Y'all wanted to see him. There he is. Um, so we're gonna grab some drums, some hi hats, some kicks, some 808s. I'm gonna start with hi hat first, because that's how I get yeah. the, the general gist of you know the rhythm of the track. I mean this is a raw collab, right? So technically while you're coming up with a drum pattern, I'm no, trying to figure right. out a cool sound or a cool melody, something that inspires us to create a track. So as you're going, I'm doing the same thing. There it is. Totally forgot. So it's like a mosh pit of producers right now. So let's go up to about 150 BPM, get it high tempo. You got to remember, even though it's 150 BPM, we're doing half time, which means, you know, it's not a disco track. <laughs> we're not actually at 150. We're at half of 150, which is what, 75? Somebody who, who took a math class, yeah, 75? Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to randomly hear me play random things as he's going. I'm just trying to come up with any kind of inspiration to any sound or melody or something. Mm -hmm. Bang. Two minds working at once. So I'm going to do the trizzle trick, putting the halftime on the hi-hats. That makes the hi-hat sound so much better. And then you mix, you turn your mix level down. So blending the two together. I'm adding a little bounce to it. Alright, so. Right, so when you're going for like a pop sound, you want to go for bright sounds that have more high frequency content because that's what energizes the brain. Bang. You up. Tag team. By the way, Uber Eats. Sometimes I like to mumble and just start singing yeah. along so it helps me create melodies like and stuff like that. Yeah. Now that we got the chords, the next thing I'm thinking is a counter melody on top of it. I like to use this RC20. It's really dope to get some of the sounds to sound like a sample. So I just keep changing the presets so I find something I like. So that's what the EQ a little bit, make it sound kind of spooky. Um, a big trick I do too, I like to use this plugin called Vinyl by Isotope. It kind of detunes the sound a little bit, but still keeps it in pocket, so you can still sing on top of it. Thank you. 
So as I'm tweaking the 808, I'm kind of just trying to find a pocket where like the kick would be, and I'll just sneak the kick underneath it, like real low underneath it. I don't really like my kick louder than my 808. Just keep trying different ones. start program or I should say plugin um, it kind of gives it like a little a little texture and gives it some volume into that little lead so instead of having it like that it's like pumping and breathing and gating and that's enough for me to actually build a full track once you add the drums um, we're gonna request a little lead guitar and we should be good Okay. I can teach it to you in one day. <laughs> I have a secret method that no, I will not reveal. I do. No, I will reveal it. Oh, okay. Hey, you heard it from this. I do not know how to play keys, by the way. I want to put that out there. <laughs> I'm self-taught. Mm -hmm. I learned a method that works for me, and you can literally in one week play any progression you need to play. It's very simple. Boom. Stay tuned. That's, cool. <laughs> That's a big promise, man. Yeah. Stay tuned. I'm waiting. Yeah, like I like to, I'll take one sound and I'll just uh, EQ it differently for every section. It's a good way to kind of, instead of having to add, 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 you can just take away to make different sections. Wow, so you change your filtering per section, per sound. Right. Dang, I never thought to do that. Especially if you're trying to sell this beat, yeah. um, you want to get straight to the point as soon as possible. Most a are going to be like, all right, I'm over it next. So you got to get straight to the point. And I'm kind of mixing as I'm sequencing, just bringing stuff down and louder as it should go. Bring down the hi-hats. Okay, well. <laughs> no, I do it like in the second half of the intro. I'll never like start with the 808. Yeah, start. Yeah. It just ruins the whole climatic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as it's not like 808 and everything, in, like it's kind of like you have to just know how to sneak in certain sounds. It's not like it's like struggling the process. Like that's the intro still. Oh, this is still the intro. Yeah, and then it drops. That's a little gap. same thing as exactly. the hook. To make your, your beats more song ready, what you need to do is leave the frequency content from about 2K up to like 8K. Yeah, that's like where really the vocals lie. Yeah. Most vocals, yeah. Like My vocal goes all the way down to 100 hertz because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's my voice. His might go down to... Well, like, that's why telephones only record like, I think it was like 5K. That's why there's no low end on telephones because your voice only gives off a certain amount of frequency. Right. That's another crazy. course. That's the whole of the course. Busyworksbeats.com. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So yeah, verse open easy for a vocal to just lay his melodies on top of it and you can start building up you know 
On the verse, you can have fun. You can even break it down in the middle of the verse. It doesn't matter as long as it just feels good. That felt good. There's no, exactly. There's no rules to it. Just whatever that feels good. Feels good right? And bring it back. Still verse. Maybe drop everything in the last little beat. Ooh. Hook. Simple. Simple. Anticipation. That's how you build it up. Little pauses. A lot of people don't use mutes. They underutilize mutes. Yeah. So I'm glad you added that. Yeah, I'm I'm big on like instead of adding like a build up or a riser or all these extra effects, I'd rather take away. Cause when you're adding, adding, mm -hmm. adding, you're just taking up so much room that doesn't need to be taken up. Mm -hmm. Give some room for the vocalist. So that's wise, knowing what to cut versus yeah. what to add. So we got intro, hook, verse, verse and back to hook, and then wrap it up with the hook. You could even do like a little pre-hook where it's like where well, the hi hats out. But an artist is gonna get on any part of the song they feel like is the hook. So as um, Trizzle would say, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. <laughs> so all right. So I'll, next thing, I would probably master it and bounce it on out, right? Mm -hmm. So you actually mastering right now? I mean, a quick little oh. <laughs> just to make it loud, oh, you know. Hey. But with mastering, I like to use multiple uh, limiters instead of using just one limiter and doing like six dBs of compression. I would do two to three and do like one or two dBs of compression. It's okay. the same amount of compression. But it doesn't sound squash. That's the biggest thing is you don't want it to sound squash. So <laughs> I'm gonna use my Ozone 7. That's one of my favorite limiters. Uh, maximizers, I should say. Um, I always do. I always do the 0.2 dBs on the ceiling because usually any more than anything more than that, certain systems like car systems and stereo systems can't handle that and it'll automatically distort the record. So I always do negative 0.2. Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what happens in my car exactly like, why does this sound like and you sizzling? have to you have to make sure you are checking in the loudest part of the song when you're limiting because if not when that loud part comes in it's going to throw off everything so i'm gonna bring that threshold down until i see a kiss like one or two dbs Just, just so it kisses it, that's it. Okay. Right? And then you throw in another one. That's what they used to do on, um, the, the, the discrete, <clears throat> I know, it's a hard word to say, the discrete compressors they would use, they would only make sure it kisses. Yeah. It, it yeah. just focuses on that transit. It's like salt, you gotta use it tastefully. Mm -hmm. That's already two compressors. I'm gonna use one last one just to, for the icing on the cake. I'm gonna mm -hmm. throw in an L2 just for, just for giggles. A little waves action. A little waves action. Waves are us. Let's go. And that's it. You see how much louder it gets. And it also brings up some of those low, uh, low instruments that you didn't hear quite well in the beat. It'll bring them up and squish it nice, you know, with the drums and everything. Because I definitely made a mistake in the beginning, overly mastering the beat before right. the vocals even were on the beat. And exactly. it was, it was like a shouting fest to try and yeah. record. Now here's one of the questions I'm always getting, by the way. Uh, before you do any mastering, they always say, how loud, how low should the beat be? Yeah. Beat B. <laughs> yeah, beat. Yeah, so I always say you need to be at 75% on the on the master fader. Let's see if I can bring this up. Right here. Okay. 75% on the peak is the is where you want to be at before you start mastering. Anything less than that, I think you're working too hard to get it loud. Anything more than that, you're risking of distortion while you're compressing. So I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. 75 right there. Mm -hmm. And then you can start mastering from that section. So you did like a pre-game? Yeah, I always pre-game. Like, it, it can't peak too too high. How'd then, you do that? Like, what did you do it to, how'd you lower everything without lowering I, I, the output? Does that make sense? I just highlighted everything and brought oh, it down. Highlight. Okay, okay, I yeah. didn't see you do that. Yeah, I highlighted mm -hmm. everything and brought it down. So your master fader is, it should be, like I said, at 75%. Oh, okay. And then, you know, once you add your compression and everything, it's gonna obviously be louder, but you won't distort. You give yourself headroom to compress. Headroom. And that's it. Quick Message. little mastering. <laughs> so anyway, that is the process. You saw it. Everybody added their little Sense. little lightning bolt to it and it made a, a thunderstorm hurricane. That's how we do it. This is how we do it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> anyway, we're going to move on to the next one again. We have so much to show you in so little time. Thank you for watching today. It's BusyWorksBeats.com. I'm with all my friends here. My new friend Todd. The good guy half in the back. <laughs> there he is doing the, uh, doing the uh, wave. And then we got Diego Ab, the boss man up in here. And everybody else. Walter behind the camera. Karen was taking shots early. She's editing now. We got my man Shay over there chilling, absorbing. So again, 
thank you for watching and uh to continue this journey subscribe today to busyworksbeats.com